Ready? I'm just whistling. I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. And a prince I'm hoping comes with this. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat and Q&A with Peter and Mary. Coffee Chat and Q&A with Peter and Mary. Coffee Chat with Q... What is it? Q&A. With Q&A? Yeah. Coffee chat and Q&A. Uh, I think that's what it is. Ali, oh my gosh, I love this. Look, you can see his tail. Oh, it looks like it's your tail. That's hilarious. I'm gonna get you. All right, let's, All right. let's hear a question. Mary asked for questions on her Instagram, at Fry Living. Yeah, go follow over there if you want to see behind the scenes, random um, pictures, videos of toads and more uh, Ollie and Harry pictures and Q and A stuff. And it's kind of Mary's journal slash blog, so like you get to also see inside her head sometimes. First question: What is your favorite thing about living in North Carolina? Ooh, ready, set, go. Everything. Well, the people. my mind goes to the people. Yeah. It, yeah. But we, I mean. I feel like the people could be anywhere, you know, like it's not specific to, Yeah. but it is, but we really love the community of people around us. I think we feel, would you say we feel more connected to community? Well, my health is such that yes. we are able to be much more connected. But I think the way that we've always said it is no matter where we live, we love the people, we love the place, and yeah. we learn the things that we love about it. And that goes for North Carolina as well. We love it. But the weather is pretty stinking awesome. Except, I mean, not except. I mean, right now, middle of summer is a little hot. It, it just means that we're spending more time in 30 minutes at a time outside instead of three hours at a time. But I feel like that was true in Massachusetts. Too. Yeah. Maybe not as intense. So. Yeah. Anyways. We love lots of things about North Carolina, including the weather and the people. I don't remember seeing Peter use his drone since you delivered donuts. Is the drone still around? Did it have an accident? Well, so here's the story on the drone. I made that video during beginning of pandemic, so it was probably May-ish that I delivered some donuts safely to neighbors uh, via drone and the FAA commented on our video. The Federal Aviation, what is it? I don't know what the, the FAA who manages the airspace, federal airspace. I mean, uh, we, we, we were like, oh, this is definitely a quarantine time, pandemic time where they have time to go through thousands of YouTube videos and find them and comment on the videos. We were like, wow. So that was one thing. So that kind of like scared me from flying my drone. Basically, I kind of wasn't supposed to deliver donuts via drone. You know, donuts were not specifically mentioned in the manual. I mean, when it said like, don't carry objects, I thought donuts maybe would be excluded. <laughs> yeah, like... Um, and then like, <laughs> technically I'm not supposed to let it out of my line of sight, which in that video I did. So anyways, which anybody who flies a drone allows it out of their sight. Anyway, so <laughs> the other reason you have not seen the drone is that laws have changed since I first bought, bought the drone. And technically because we make a living here on YouTube, to be legal, legally we use footage from a drone in our videos, I need a commercial flight license. I just found this out. I was like, oh babe, something about the drone, something about filming, and he's like, so they changed the law. And I was like, so oh like, my goodness. Technically, like I still view myself as a hobbyist drone pilot. It's not like yeah. I'm trying to like make money from my drone flights. Right. But I think those two incidents, the donut delivery video and the FAA commenting, and then 
anyways, I got kind of scared of flying my drone. And so I still have it and I haven't flown it in a while. Also, we live really close to an airport. Te yeah, but technically I'm in a safe zone. Um, oh, so. right, here, but like we don't have a ton of places to, to fly it. Yeah, and uh, I think I think at our lake there's like a bald eagle protection thing. Right. So, so we, yeah. I still have it just to pull out of my back pocket if we ever need to get that aerial shot. But. Yeah, yeah. Over the years, I've found encouragement through songs mentioned or briefly played in your vlogs. What are some yes. you are listening to or liking these days? Side note, king of my heart. Let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that there's song. a couple different verses there. Um, king of my heart was later was significant in helping me as my mom was diagnosed with cancer and died quickly. So mm. encouraging... So encouraging to remember that God is good and will never let us down. Oh, that's so good. That was the song that the week that my doctors first mentioned needing to talk about lung transplant. There's a video, first conversations about lung transplant. That song was super meaningful to us and we shared a little clip or yeah, we shared about it in a video. So I'm yeah. glad that that yeah. could bless somebody else's heart as much as it did mine. Mm. I, w I always think about this because sometimes we do show clips of us like in the car and that's part of our reason is we want yeah. we want to share like what's on our because like it, often music helps us express our heart and connect and this is like the magic of music is that it helps connect like what your brain is thinking about and what your heart is feeling and express that. Right, especially when you don't really know how to yes. express it. So, um... <coughs> What goodness of God. Yeah, goodness of All God. All my life you have been faithful. That song. I think that one is especially meaningful in this season for us because um, it's, it's this recognition. All my life, God, you've been faithful. So like the past 10 years of Mary's disease progression, God has been faithful. And then the line with every breath that I am able. And it's kind of like this recognition of this new season of health. Yes. And, um, and, and even in the like lower lung function yes. breath that I am able, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. It's just like, yes. God is good all the time. Yes. 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 Um, okay, so so far we've listed it's one song. <laughs> resonates. Um, okay. Um, oh. Categories. I, the so, map. Yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed um, like some of the broader categories. We really like Maverick City um, music. And oh, what is one that we've been listening to? Um, uh, the last few days I've listened to a mighty one. Uh, but there's one, uh, Wait For You by Maverick City Music yep. that... Um, yeah, it's really good. So, typically, if you put on a song, like Maverick City Music, um, what was the one you mentioned? Wait for you. Uh, Mighty One. Mighty One. Then, whatever platform you're on should give you recommendations that are like that. Mm -hmm. That's our recommendation. Yeah. All right. Okay. When will you be able to get your new lungs? So if you are new around here, or if you tune in once in a while, I'll give you a little like abbreviated version of this. You guys might know that we came to Durham, North Carolina. We thought we came for a double lung and liver transplant. I was evaluated two years ago and they basically said, you're not ready for it yet, but we think it'll probably be soon. And if you can, I'd go ahead and move here. We moved here and we were glad to move here. It wasn't like, oh, don't make us. It was like, okay, this is the next step in our mm -hmm. life. We moved here and as we soon realized, Trikafta works for my body. And Which is a new medication. Yes, yeah. thank you. Um, a new groundbreaking medication and it has changed the trajectory of my life and my health. So instead of needing a double lung and liver transplant in 
months, it will most likely be years. It might be decades. We don't know. Mm -hmm. And so... All we know is that Tricapta has given two years of stability. I it, didn't, yeah. it didn't cure Mary CF or the disease progression. She still has a lot less lung function than a normal person. Right. But we <clears throat> have two years of stability. That's all we know. And it seems to continue to provide stability. Yeah. So like my doctors, my, my like very frequent doctor is just a cystic fibrosis doctor. And I also have a team who is a lung transplant team, but I haven't seen them in like 18 months. And they will follow me from a distance until I get closer to needing a transplant. And side note, transplant is a last resort option. It is not a cure and it is not a guarantee. And so we wanna kind of frame our minds around that is a last resort option. And if that becomes an option, we are grateful for that. But also we hold the like severity of it and the, the seriousness of it, um, knowing that there's no guarantees with it. Yeah, so. and, and just to like, I feel like this might be helpful to say, say what Mary has right now is much more desirable. I like it's not like Tricaft is putting off something that we want. No. Yeah. So like just because I think some people might yeah. have in their mind like, oh, so you weren't able to get the transplant right. because of Tricaft. Right. It's like, no, this is better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So with transplant comes a whole new set of challenges, including I don't know if the word is like fighting off or like keeping at bay rejection. Mm -hmm. And that is a battle that my transplant friends and family battle that with grace and strength. And I know that their desire would be for me to wait as long as humanly possible until I step into that. And so that's where my doctors are coming from. We want to push it off as many years as possible. So that's a, I hope a quick kind of summary. Um, I, yay, I love your Q&As. What's your current favorite hymn or worship song or favorite of all time? All time? Oh. oh. So we already answered a few of our current favorites. I don't know all time, but I love, what, what is, um... Okay, Ollie, just a minute. Yeah. He wants to go. What's what would you say all time favorite? Oh man. Oh. That's really hard. Okay, this is just something that came to mind. I don't know this is my all time favorite, but in the season right before we had to move to North Carolina and um all this was swirling about transplant and picking up our life and moving and all this, um, the song that like really oh. ministered to us in that was a song called He Will Hold Me Fast by uh, the Gettys. And he will hold me fast, he will hold me fast, for my Savior loves me so, he will hold me fast. And like we, the, um, one day when we got the call that Duke wanted us to come in for a full week-long multi-organ evaluation, it like took us by surprise. I had worship music, uh, worship practice that night at church and we got there and we were just kind of like in shock mm -hmm. and we told the people who were on the worship team and they prayed for us and we sat in the pew they played that song and we just like sat in the pew and cried. Mm -hmm. Um, cause it's like, we know he will hold us fast yeah. and he did every single day. Um, just like that other song says, I will sing of the goodness of God. Um, yeah. It, and yeah, I, I think, I think probably because of that moment with the worship team and they sang that song and just the reminders of truth and like, even like one verse of that song goes, 
when I fear my faith will fail, he will hold me fast. Like, when I like, basically, when I can't see what God's doing, he holds on to us and, and yeah. carries us. And um, we've just experienced that in so many ways in the last yeah. 10 years of marriage. Yeah. yeah. So. Last question. Have you ever been to Cleveland, Ohio? No. We've been to Cincinnati and lots of other places, but not Cleveland yet. Maybe but. one day. Okay, if you guys have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments and go to Instagram and um, let me know over there as well. Thanks for joining us today. And? As always. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Poodle. Okay, we can go for a walk now.